Well, I'm talking bonsai today with Brian Sagawa at Sagawa's Nursery in Woodland, Washington. And Brian, it looks like that we have an older version of this plant. That's right. This is a Shimpaku juniper here. This is probably going to be about 20 some years old. That's wow. actually about three years old there, Judy. That's uh, that's how it. You got to actually start at that age to be able to twist the trunk and get the branches in the right places. You need to start at a young young age like that. But it looks like this one kind of missed a couple haircuts. So you're going to show us how to make this just look a little bit more um, thin and kind mm -hmm. of just more definite, more artistic. That's right. Um, I think an easy way to explain that is I was, uh, I don't know where it was at a class or whatever, but they, they, it was mentioned to be uh, like a cloud form in an effect, but be able to have butterflies flying between oh. some of the pads or the branches, you know, because you can kind of see some of that, sure. but you do not do, you know, it has to be trained or remove the branches and things like that. Okay, here, master. Okay. Well, obviously, if we just look at that, sometimes before making a prune, if you just kind of visualize what's, mm -hmm. obviously, if we get rid of this one branch, this was here for a while, it needs to be out of our way. Oh. We're using concave cutters. Uh, Judy, these are actually designed to, so they don't leave a scar or a stub sure. or anything like that. So they they are, they're kind of a, it's a costly uh, hobby, but there's a reason the right for tools. it. You sure. do need the right tools, but you can see now after removing that, just that one simple little branch, right. how it, you know, it opened everything up. And what about some of the uh, lighter pruning on the, That's on right. the needles? Yeah. It's uh, pretty simple. It's almost like, uh, like you know, they trim, like trimming, the exactly. It would be kind of a haircutting, but what happens is a lot of the branches don't know. They, they would like to grow. We want them to grow up to the light. And mm -hmm. a lot of times by weight, they just sure. get weighted down. They, they tend to hang down. So just by this little bit of time I took on here, you can see we expose some of the branches. It makes it look a lot older. Right. And it opens it up so you get the the natural beauty of the the plant well it looks like it's going to take a little bit of time and i know we want to come back and show how to look at the roots so we're going to give you a couple minutes to finish up the top Alrighty. brian it looks like a totally different plant it's just beautiful now it didn't take that long at all no. but it's just uh making sure we get in the right portion as there's a little bit of proportion to sure. the plant but yeah you can see what a difference it does make and you can see the butterflies flitting in between the you branches can now, now can't you you actually can actually kind of visualize that so I know that whenever you do top pruning you should do root pruning too so we're gonna show that also. that's exactly right so and let's open that up okay usually we'd have wiring to hold this up as a new plant but mm -hmm. boy look at that Jim. Wow. you can see the it very happy. very healthy plant but mm -hmm. uh, in order for it to grow properly we need to reduce the roots down so it has room to grow in this pot mm -hmm. and proportionally we want to that was too small right. so we can continue having this plant in that pot if it was small enough for the rest of its life by reducing the root system every couple years mm -hmm. but proportionally you can see it just doesn't it look a little it does yeah. it looks much nicer in this i think so okay so now what well the soil right beside you okay um I just wanted to show viewers, uh, you can see it, pumice. Uh, this is a product here, it's just a high fired clay. Uh, you can find at most garden centers in the aquatic uh, potting soils, actually mm -hmm. is what it is. And uh, along with just bark, it's just a bark media, you know, okay. pretty simple. But the bottom line is, is to provide drainage for the junipers, the pines, as a, you know, we have so much rainfall. These right. are outdoors, so mm -hmm. drainage is where it's all at. And so once you pot that up, you want to give it a little fertilizer? Yeah, after we're going to be done, well, I think we have a little root rake here. Okay. And, or that root hook would work too. Basically, okay. I just, uh, you're going to see quite a bit of, uh, would you want me to go ahead? Can and, we take it out? Yeah, I oh, can go sure. ahead and do that real okay. quick. And tweezers work too, but I, obviously something that big. Tease that out. We're going to need to loosen that up quite a bit. And then after we're done, we just simply uh, would probably just remove, you know, a good portion of that. You can see it's, it's just really like any other plant. There. Yes. And uh, it does, this does take a little bit of work. The timing on this, Judy, you'd probably want to consider, as long as you're not going anywhere, uh, you can do this most any time. But mm -hmm. uh, obviously with the heat around, uh, you want to be cautious of the, you know, this is reducing a lot of the root. It's going to be kind of stressful for the plant. You wouldn't be able to go on a vacation for a while, but we're just trying to get rid of that. So you need babysitters if you do this you in the do. middle of the summer yes, that it doesn't dry out. That's the only so. little trick about it. But we're just going to come by and remove, I'm going to so say about a percentage. quarter inch, eighth inch, because mm -hmm. that's where all the root mass is. Okay. 
Wow. Yeah. It, it looks like a lot, but they actually appreciate it because when we put this back in, it's going to have room for the, the roots to grow into. Okay. So you're going to prune all that out and then you're just going to plant it then back in this pot here, that's, this new pot. That's correct. Brian, you really use that root hook pretty aggressively, but that's okay. That's right. Um, you can be pretty aggressive to these, the, especially junipers. They have so much root involved to them. You mm -hmm. don't have to worry about um, damaging one because we have so much here, so much root mass, I guess, to say the least, to work with. Uh, we're fortunate that junipers being, you know, in the Northwest here, abundance of them and plenty to work with. Uh, and so it'll just flush out more roots. You're really encouraging more roots to grow. That's exactly right. That's If we didn't do this, it would be stunning itself. Now it has room to grow, okay. and it's going to only increase in health and vigor. Right. And now what is all this wiring in here through the drainage holes? What we did here is uh, we actually just, this one type was to hold the, the drainage netted in. Right. You can see the back behind there. Uh -huh. we got the clips there. Then we just ran some smaller, this is like a 1.5 millimeter, and this will be to hold the when we're done, it's going to... Oh, because it'll flip right out because there isn't right. a big root system. Oh, yeah. Dogs coming by or kids playing, <laughs> right. basketballs, everything can knock these things out and it only sets it back. Okay, so I'm going to put a little soil yeah. in here and you're actually going to plant that. We've really gone the whole gamut. You really showed us the whole thing. Yeah, that's okay. what we wanted to do. And, you know, another thing is if we're trying to make this look older, some of the rootage is very... Just in, in Japan, some of the... When they do the judging and things, the rootage helps it's just as important as the top believe it or not and the rootage is oh, down here uh -huh. the older points that expose mm -hmm. that just makes it look a lot more aged oh beautiful very important in, in placement of the front there's always a front and a back to the the, the bonsai part too okay i think i'm ready there yeah this this is a little different rule too um some of the things never in the dead center okay and we actually have it at the pots level so when this is done mm -hmm. normally we're going to have it look like it's one the 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 pot is actually like the framework or something. Right. So we don't have this like an inch and a half below for the I watering. Mm -hmm. That's why we have so much drainage in here. So it's actually going to be where you got the right level right there. That's we just come back and fill that in. Well, you're a great teacher. And, and so then we just kind of tie that on top. We're somehow. just going to fasten it just like you started there. And then we come in right behind it and then backfill if this was the right. You know, that's one thing about bonsai. You are the artist, so you get to place where you want it or to the front, to the back, to the left or right, and then you just backfill. Well, I think you've given us such a great little tidbit. I mean, there's always, it's a lifelong study to do bonsai, and you have classes occasionally, so check the website. That's correct. We try to uh, educate the customers quite a bit, so it's the best, uh, the website's probably the best. Yeah, so if you have any questions, if you want to get into this wonderful hobby, it's a beautiful way to have small trees in your yard. You can have so many more plants because yeah. they're tiny. Come up to Sugawa's Nursery in Woodland, Washington. Talk to Brian and his staff. Well, thanks so much. It was That's really good. interesting. That was great. Thank you. Thank you.